her craft have already operated over many different forms of the Earth's surface. The British Inter-Service Hovercraft Trials Unit went to North Africa with an SRN-5 to investigate whether hovercraft could be used for desert transportation. A base was established at El Adam in Libya, near the old battlefields of Tobruk. We knew the hovercraft could move rapidly over sand, but we were also aware that it would generate a large dust cloud. The gas turbine powering the craft swallows a lot of air, but abrasive sand taken in with it causes severe engine wear. A filtration system, already rig tested, was designed to prevent this. Instead, the engine is made to breathe relatively clean air from the plenum chamber. This air would already have passed through the lift fan, which assists in separating the larger airborne sand particles. Taking the air from the top of the plenum chamber and turning it back on itself further helps particle separation. After passing through a coarse mesh filter, the air goes through a double bank of vortex generating filters. These remove all but the very finest dust by swirling the air before it reaches the engine intake. We had instruments with us to confirm that this filtration system worked effectively in practice. When the craft is moving, air from various parts of the filtration system is sucked by a vacuum pump through the tubing and sand samples are trapped by membrane filters. We knew that the faster the hovercraft travelled, the further it left its sand cloud behind. So our programme of tests started with these relatively easy higher speeds first. Several runs were made at various speeds and a watch kept on the sampling instruments. The flat desert near the base was suitable for maintaining the speeds required. After each run, the monitors were removed and sealed with care because the slightest contamination in the small samples collected could easily lead to false results. Nearly 500 samples were taken during the trial. They were sent home for detailed analysis, including particle size count, but a small proportion was immediately checked at base. The contents of each monitor, together with the filter membrane, were recorded using a balance weighing to one hundredth of a milligram. Even variations due to change of relative humidity had been taken into account. When the samples were checked by microscope, it was found that the majority of the particles actually reaching the engine were so small that if they had been ten times larger they would still be invisible to the naked eye. It was only after we had satisfied ourselves that the filtration system was coping adequately that the craft was permitted to operate at slower speeds when a higher density cloud would be generated. We worked in temperatures of 32 degrees centigrade and this sequence of sampling tests took 10 days to complete with each filtration run lasting exactly four minutes. In the worst case, over one tonne per hour of sand passed through the lift van, but only one pound per hour of very fine sand reached the engine, causing negligible damage. We were now prepared to let the filtration system stand up to the rough conditions of a long distance run. A neoprene coated nylon mat laid directly on the sand was used for daily servicing which permitted check running to be done in a comparatively dust-free environment. At the end of the filtration testing, we made a thorough check over of all parts of the craft.
examination of the engine and associated systems helped to confirm our findings on the filtration system. However, the deliberate hovering in high-density sand clouds and operating over an extremely abrasive surface had caused serious wear to other parts of the craft. The neoprene-coated propeller had eroded badly on the leading edges and tips and was changed for one covered in a polyurethane sheath. The skirt system was worn. It was decided to replace the rear bags and several of the skirt flutes were also changed. These preliminary trials had shown the need for further research into skirt and propeller protection over this type of terrain. Simultaneous with its inspection, there was a reconnaissance for a long distance run using a four-wheel drive vehicle which, with the camel, is the normal form of surface transport in the desert. The journey was to be a round trip of 350 miles just into the Great Sand Sea, which lies some 30 miles south of the Jirabab Depression. This was to be the longest overland journey ever to be attempted by a hovercraft. As we moved off, there was the normal short period after we had left the mat and before we had picked up speed when the sand seriously reduced visibility. The first part of the journey was made over desert similar to that used in the filtration trials with a generous covering of scrub and stones. was a noticeable acceleration on the occasional flat, sandy stretches encountered. Further south, all signs of vegetation disappeared, leaving flat deserts still liberally covered with stones. The first 135 miles were completed at an average speed of 40 miles per hour. The country had become more undulating near where we had planned to set up camp for the night. we encountered the most difficult part of the journey with a descent of some 400 feet into the Jerobub Depression. We met slopes of 30 to 40 feet with some sheer steps of 5 to 6 feet. Many times small hillocks had to be used to help control the hovercraft. Once through this series of obstacles, we reached a planned refueling stop. After half an hour, we were on our way again. vehicles were not so fortunate. What appeared to be firm sand turned out to be anything but.
as we negotiated further obstacles, we had our troubles too. The craft slithered into a concealed wadi. The bow was bent and the skirt torn. After temporary repairs, we also had to be towed out. Then we were able to continue our journey to the Great Sand Sea. The surface of this part of the country was so rough that the support vehicles could not follow us up. The whole round trip of 350 miles was covered in 17 and a half hours running time at an average speed of 20 miles per hour. The journey confirmed our preliminary evaluation of the filtration system in that in spite of arduous conditions, the engine responded satisfactorily throughout. It also confirmed that further research into skirt material and propeller protection is needed. However, although the hovercraft is not yet sufficiently developed to make protracted overland operations a viable proposition, its potential is shown in that no other single surface vehicle could complete in such comparative comfort a journey over such difficult and punishing country.